everyone, my name is Anya and today on Math and Science Concepts, I will be talking about the mole, the link between the macroscopic and the atomic world. But before we begin, make sure to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notifications bell so that you never miss another one of my informative videos. So let's begin. When we encounter the word mole, some of us might think of a small fuzzy creature that burrows in gardens, or perhaps the common pigmented marks on our skin. But in chemistry, the word mole is a key unit of measurement. Its name is derived from the word molecule. Similar to how a dozen is another way of saying 12, mole is another way of saying 602-214-076-000-000-000-000-000. That's about 602 billion trillion and it is specifically used for elementary entities such as atoms and molecules. Scientists sometimes abbreviate this as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Chemists use moles when calculating reagents for a chemical reaction or determining concentrations of a solution. Similar to how a recipe requires specific amounts of each ingredient, reaction protocols call for specific ratios of each reagent, and using moles allows chemists to directly determine that ratio. The number of particles in a mole, approximately 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, may seem excessively large, but it is useful to chemists because they use and weigh out their reagents based on what they can see on a scale. And while a single particle isn't visible to the naked eye, the enormous number of particles in a mole results in an amount that they can see and accurately weigh. Because moles quantify the number of particles, not the overall mass, and different types of particles have different masses, a mole of one substance can vary greatly in mass from a mole of another. For instance, one mole of helium is four grams, while one mole of gold is 197 grams. Let's dive deeper into the mole. So why do we use moles? The answer is that moles give us a consistent method to convert between atoms or molecules in grams. It's simply a convenient way to use when for performing calculations. You may not find it too convenient when you're first learning how to use it, but once you become familiar with it, a mole will be as normal as a unit as say a dozen or a bite. Atoms, molecules, and other particles are all extremely small. You need a lot to even weigh them. So that's why chemists use the mole as a measure. Keep in mind that not everything weighs the same if you have a mole of it. A mole refers to the number of particles you have, not the mass. If you had a mole of feathers and a mole of bricks, you would have the same number of feathers and bricks, but they would weigh completely different. Moles can be based on any unit, grams, pounds, etc. In chemistry, the common unit of mass is grams, so that is what I will share with you. One mole is about 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. A particle could be an atom, a molecule, a proton, an electron, etc. Now that number makes our lives easier in chemistry. Here's an example chemical reaction. C plus O2 is equal to CO2. So we can say that one atom of carbon reacts with one molecule of oxygen to form one molecule of carbon dioxide. Interesting, but not useful. So let's make it useful. 
kind of hard to find one carbon atom. So let's take a measurable and useful amount. We are going to work with grams instead of atoms. Go to a periodic table and look up carbon. Element 6. Find the atomic mass of carbon on the periodic table. Did you get 12.011 or very close to it? Good. Now I'm going to roll the information above backwards and you should see why it is useful to chemists. 12.011 grams of carbon is one mole and it contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Now for oxygen, its atomic mass is 16.00 grams from the periodic table of oxygen atoms, which is again one mole, and it contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. But look at the formula. Oxygen is O2. So we have two atoms of oxygen in one mole. So one mole of O2 is two times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of O2. In the reaction, one mole of carbon reacts with one mole of O2 to produce one mole of CO2. That one mole of CO2 is one mole times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. This is what the mole concept is about. We can't conveniently count the number of atoms or molecules, but we can easily weigh them using the periodic table. We can get the number of grams that we need and that we will get in our reaction. So, the number of particles in a mole is called Avogadro's number after Italian scientist Amadeo Avogadro, who lived in 1776 to 1856. He didn't introduce the mole, but he made other important contributions to chemistry, for which later the scientists wanted to honor him. When the mole joined the international system of units in 1971, it was defined as the amount of substance that contained as many elementary entities as there were in 0.012 kilograms of the most common form of carbon, called carbon-12. However, that definition eventually drew criticism for being overly complex. In 2018, a new definition was approved that defined the mole as exactly 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd elementary entities of a substance. The number of garden-dwelling moles on Earth is drastically less than a chemistry mole, but they are still common critters. If you see one, take a moment to consider its homonyms important role in chemistry. If you think of another word that means one thing in everyday conversation and something else in science, let us know in the comments below. So now we're talking about the macroscopic, atomic, and symbolic worlds of chemistry. Chemistry works in three very different worlds. Most measurements are done on the macroscopic scale with an object visible to the naked eye. When you walk into a chemical laboratory, you find a variety of apparatuses, bottles, tubes, flasks, beakers, etc., designed to study the various different liquids and solids large enough to be seen. Although they perform experiments on the macroscopic scales, chemists think about the behavior of matter in terms of a world of 
atoms and molecules. In this atomic world, water is no longer a liquid that freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius, but individual molecules that contain two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. One of the challenges students face when they encounter chemistry for the first time is understanding the process by which chemists perform experiments on the macroscopic scale that can be interpreted in terms of the structure of matter on the atomic scale. The task of bridging the gap between the atomic and the macroscopic world is made more difficult by the fact that chemists also work in a symbolic world in which they represent water as H2O and requ require writing equations. So what is the mass of an atom? An atom is the smallest particle into which an element can be divided without losing its chemical identity. Atoms con consist of a heavy central nucleus surrounded by a cloud of negatively charged particles called electrons. The nucleus contains positive particles called protons and electrically neutral particles called neutrons. The number of protons is called the atomic number. This number uniquely identifies each chemical element. In turn, protons and neutrons are composed of quarks. Pretty interesting, huh? A element is a chemical substance that is made up of a single kind of atom. Iron, carbon, and hydrogen are all elements. They're just different. A molecule is formed when two or more atoms of any kind of element are joined together chemically with a chemical bond. If a molecule contains two or more different elements, it is known as a compound. A water molecule is a compound because of the elements hydrogen and oxygen. They're different. If an atom or molecule becomes electrically charged by gaining or losing one or more electrons, it becomes an ion. If the atom gains electrons, it has a negative charge. That's called an anion. If it loses electrons, it has a positive charge, and that's called a cation. So now, the mole as a collection of atoms. To appreciate the magnitude of Avogadro's number, consider a mole of pennies. Stacked vertically, a mole of pennies would be 4.5 times 10 to the 17th power miles high, or almost six times the diameter of the Milky Way galaxy. Mind blowing. If a mole of pennies were distributed equally among the entire population on Earth, each person would have more than one trillion dollars. So, it is the value of Avogadro's constant and one of the seven SI base units below in the table. And the modern definition is the number of entities defined by 6.022140076 times 10 to the 23rd. One mole abbreviated as MOL is a very large number. When written out, it looks like this. 602 Zero 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 like said previously. Let's consider one mole of rice grains. One mole of rice 
has a mass of 1.2 times 10 to the 19th power kgs. When you consider that there are over 7 million people on Earth, this would give us about 1.7 times 10 to the 19, uh, I mean 9 kgs of rice per person. On other words, each person has to eat almost 1.7 billion kgs to get rid of one mole of rice. To make things worse, the rice would cover the land area of the earth close to 50 meters deep. If one mole of rice were made into cube, it would be 193 kilometers on each side. Using the mole to measure things as large as rice grains is not practical. It's only used for atoms and molecules. The mole is used to measure things the size of a molecule and smaller only. So now on to molarity. Molarity is calculated by dividing the number of moles of a solute in the solution by the volume of the solution in liters. Note that molarity has units of moles per liter. The product of the molarity of a solution times its volume in liters is therefore equal to the number of moles of solute dissolved in the solution. We can write the relationship in the equation as stated here, m times v equals n, where m is molarity, v is volume in liters, and n is the number of moles. Let's see an example. How many moles of sodium sulfate, Na2SO4, are present in 250 milliliters of a 0 0.15 milliliter solution of sodium sulfate. We use the molarity relationship to calculate the answer I have solved up here. Here it is. And we get the number in moles. 0 0.03 seven five okay now chemical equations as a representation of chemical reactions a chemical equation consists of a list of reactants the starting substances on the left hand side separated by an arrow symbol as a list of products substances formed in the chemical reaction on the right hand side Plus the two formulas are fairly simple. This equation could be read as 2HCl plus 2Na yields 2NaCl and H2. For the reaction of hydrochloric acid with sodium. Alternatively, we could verbalize this equation as two hydrochloric acid molecules and two sodium atoms react to form two formula units of sodium chloride and hydrogen gas molecule. So here you can see the different variants of the arrow symbol are used to denote the type of reaction. So this just forward arrow is a net forward reaction. That means it's going in the direction of the reactant. This double arrow uh, with the arrow head full means a reaction in both directions. And this arrow symbol with arrows going in both directions, but the arrow head in half means that the reaction is at equilibrium. Now this double line means the reaction is stoichiometric. And this double arrow on a single line means resonance. That means it's not a reaction. So now that we know what the mole is, let's do an example calculation. So, what is the mass of one mole of ethanol, which has the chemical formula 
CH3CH2OH. We are given ethanol. CH3CH2OH contains two carbon atoms, one oxygen atom, and six hydrogen atoms. The relationships are molar mass is the sum of the molar masses for each atom in the compound. So we have to solve, and here is how we're going to do it. Multiply the molar mass by the number of atoms in the formula, CH3CH2OH. So for carbon, 12.011 grams per mole times 2 equals 24.022 grams per mole. For oxygen, 15.999 grams per mole times one, because we have only one oxygen atom, equals 15.999 grams per mole. For hydrogen, lastly, 1.0079 grams per mole times six equals 6.0474 grams per mole. Now add the masses together. 24.022 plus 15.999 plus 6.0474 equals 46.068 grams per mole. So our answer is one mole of ethanol CH3CH2OH has a mass of 46.068 grams. Why six in the hydrogen? So here, you see that we have three hydrogen atoms, and then we have two hydrogen atoms, and then there's one more, and we add three plus two plus one, we get six. So that's why we're calculating for hydrogen with six atoms, okay? I hope you understand that. So now, lastly, now we're ending the near of this video. So we would like to mention the day in recognition of the month. October 23rd, denoted 1023 in the US, is recognized by some as Mall Day. It is an informal holiday in honor of the unit among chemists. The date is derived from the Avogadro number, which is approximately 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It starts at 6.02 a.m. and ends at 6.02 p.m. Overall, you deep dive into the world of moles and you will find that the mole is indispensable in chemistry. It bridges the atomic and macroscopic worlds. Atoms and molecules are both small and numerous. Counting them individually is nearly impossible. The moles measurement offers a way to quantify these entities on a scale that is easy to understand and with we will work on paper. paper. So conveniently, this large number matches the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12, making it a practical unit for calculations. The mole enables chemists to calculate the mass of substances involved in chemical reactions. By using moles as measuring tools, chemists can get precise and accurate measurements in their experiments. Accurate measurements are essential for predicting yields, scaling reactions for industrial processes, and ensuring safety in laboratory and commercial settings. The concept of the mole facilitates a wide range of chemical analyses and applications. Understanding the mole is crucial for countless people, enthusiasts, who wish to deepen their knowledge will also find the mole to be a building block. 
And that brings me to the end of this chemistry presentation, which has been made possible by le your likes and subscribes. So continue to support my channel initiative in growing my channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.